a note with pedal makes a beautiful decrescendo, but it's a bit more vibrant and it lasts just a bit longer. It floats, it has a little bit of life to it. I'd like to discuss a very big issue, which is the pedal and the piano. Um, any number of composers and pianists have said that the pedal is the soul of the piano, and it is. Without the pedal, we really would be nothing. But why and how to use it and why to use it when is extremely important at all levels of musical development. Um, in this segment on pedaling, you won't see my feet. It's not about my feet. Sometimes I'm talking about pedaling to a student, they start looking at my foot, and I said, don't look at my foot. You can look at my foot. That's not what it's about. You really pedal by ear. Um, now, first of all, let's go to some very basics. You know that there's this pedal sticking out and you press down on it with your foot. A couple of quick pieces of advice, straight from the great teacher Rosina Levine, whom I studied, who at the time I studied with her at Juilliard, she was the fam most famous piano teacher in the world and was 90 years old. And at lessons at her home, she would get down on the floor, have you take your shoe off and watch how you pedaled. Now, I'm not going to do that for you, but I'm going to tell you what she was looking for. Number one, she felt that you should pedal with the ball of your foot, not with your toes. So that's why she wanted to see with you. So, you know, it was, you need a certain amount of strength to press that down with control. She also felt, and I'll, we'll get into this um, in more detail, the foot should never leave the pedal because of many reasons. When, when the pedal is up and your foot's in contact with it, it's good to know that it's there. The moment your foot loses contact, all sorts of mischief can happen. Here are the two biggest mischiefs I know of, both of which are make noise that might not be audible in the 10th row of a concert hall, but it might affect your ability to control the sound. The number one is lifting your foot and stomping on the pedal. You won't see it, but you'll hear it. The other one is when the pedal is down and you let it up very fast and you hear this noise. Thud. Now that's not so serious in either case, but if you're trying to pedal smoothly in a difficult piece like the Wallstein Sonata, and you let the pedal come up too fast and, uh, and with a bit of a thud, you're actually gonna get a break in the beautiful smooth sound because there's no way you can play that theme of the Wallstein well without the pedal on a modern piano because there aren't enough fingers. to make a good legato, you need the help of this, in, this pedal instrument. Now, if you, if you lift the pedal too fast, you're gonna get a series of square sounds. Um, bum, bum, bum. You're not gonna get that nice. You have to let them uh, meld. Also, even I've heard very good pianists, even at the Chopin competition in 2015 on the jury, that would use their foot as a rhythm section. And they're playing a waltz and they're pounding in time. By the time you're playing a piece like that, you shouldn't be pounding on the pedal unconsciously. Just like I say about rushing, slowing down, or bad pedaling, if you want to do it, that's fine. But don't do it simply because it's a bad habit that you're not conscious of. Because that's, that's distracting your energy and attention from the musical results. Another thing is that pedal is does some obvious functions. It turns disparate notes into a harmony. There's no way we can reach those with our hand, and we, yet with the pedal we can still hear them, because the pedal makes all the strings of the piano vibrate and it increases the resonance. A note without pedal makes a beautiful decrescendo. A note with pedal makes a beautiful decrescendo, but it's a bit more vibrant and it lasts just a bit longer. It floats, it has a little bit of life to it. Now we want both pedaled and unpedaled sound in, in music making. Pedal also connects tones, especially tones that you can't reach with your hand. If you're playing Chopin's last nocturne, you can actually connect the tones with your fingers. With many, in many passages, you can't connect them with your fingers and you need to use the pedal as a, as a blending agent. Similarly, 
you can play a scale legato. Where you connect the tones. When we do that with our fingers and not with our feet, we let... I'm doing it, I'm exaggerating. We let the tones blend. Why do we do that? Because if we lift that tone... If we don't connect them, there's no overlap and all you hear is the strong attack of the piano. The piano only has an attack. It has whatever sustain it has. And then it has the end, which you control. So you can only really control the attack and the end. You can't do anything once it's down. I don't care if you vibrate or jump on it or get tense or are very expressive, which is natural. It's not going to help the actual sound. Um, so you can also do it with pedal, where you can connect. See, if I pedal too fast, it's going to... Each tone is going to go boom, boom, boom. Whereas if I overlap them a bit, you get not legato, you get the illusion of legato. So you can do legato with your hands or with a pedal or with a combination of both. You know, there's a lot of argument about that you should be able to do the legato with your fingers and not with a pedal. Well, by the time you're playing pieces by Chopin, you, you're going to really have to. Originally, um, there was a lot of polyphonic music. Then when monophonic music, music with harmony and melody, sort of took over after Bach, we had melodies and accompaniments, just like in operas or songs. And uh, the accompaniment sometimes is a texture. And sometimes...